Each team has secured one point in the standings. And off we go to sudden death. Five minutes on the board, Matty Veneers. Larkin stand in the face-off circle. Seattle will toss out Everly and Larson as well. shot just wide eight seconds left McCann out in front they score hey hey what do you say Jordan Everly one thing right 64 minutes you have like a couple quick ones when we had the lead there was no wobble we went right back to it those are character building wins right there What a handsome chap, John Forslund bobblehead. Hey, hey. Right. I'm going to be honest, that is a beautiful bobblehead. That is beautiful. This is the first and only John Forslund bobblehead. I don't think this will ever be duplicated. I love it. Seriously, I'm humbled by it. Thank the Kraken for even thinking about doing this. But there's two things about it that are very annoying. Number one, it looks way too good, better than me. And aside from that, it talks. I think the combination of that and the advancements with AI, this thing could replace me someday. Okay, maybe not right now, but maybe somewhere down the line. This is the second time in my career I've been able to be part of a launch and um, bringing hockey to a new market and exposing it to fans who have no idea about the sport and fans who really know the game. When you get a chance to do that twice in a broadcasting career, that's pretty special. You know, not just the second season and going to the playoffs and all that. The first year was one of the best years of my career, and it continues to be. And I mean that. You can't argue it was a slow start for the Kraken. They were only able to get those three points over the course of six games, but for me, they really ramped it up on that road trip. It was a great one. You're able to get five points over the course of four games. For the third time on this trip, we go to three on three. Sudden death overtime. Done. McCann scores! Hey, hey, what do you say? Jared McCann and the Kraken. They could have won all four games, and I think they, they could have a couple more wins with a little luck here and there. I mean, when you looked at the schedule in the first 10 games and seven of the 10 around the road and who they were playing, it wasn't going to be easy. And to kind of scratch and claw to get the five of eight to end the month was good. And hopefully they can come home in November and really make some hay. The Kraken go for two in a row for the first time this season. Tonight, they host the Nashville Predators right here. The first thing that has to happen is they have to understand, dominate your home ice. Look, opening face off. It's Yanni Gord and Colton Sissons. Sit back and enjoy this one. So the second Muckle Shoot Casino power play for the Seattle Kraken. Under six minutes left in period one. Goes deeper in the zone and back for Schultz. This way, Bjorkstrand, a shot. He scores! He reads the play, pirouettes, shoots it, fought off again by the German gentleman. Philip Grubauer, incredible performance by him. Dumoulin with a shot, he scores! Pick up the phone! It's answer time! By coming back here and maintaining an identity that they have on the road at home, and I think hopefully that's what we're going to see in November. We're going to see them you know, grab a hold of these home dates and use it as a, a launching point to kind of propel them into December. It's a 4-2 win over the Nashville Predators. A total team effort. And our first star of the game, 35 saves tonight for Philip Gruber. He was simply astounding. Since we got to Detroit, I think we're playing better and better as, uh, as the season goes on. 
it's coming together. So important two points. Lots of good efforts all the way through. Coming off the East Coast, coming off a 10-day trip, coming back here, we knew we'd have to grind through this one a little bit, right? And you guys did that. Played your best hockey in the third period. It's a hell of a good two points coming back here, starting this little short two-game stand. When I'm at Morning Skate, what I'm looking for is obviously what is the lineup going to be? Who's the starting goaltender? Are there any changes to the power play? What I really like about how the fourth line is built right now for the Kraken is first and foremost, the versatility that Ron Francis and his team brought in. Kyler Yamamoto can move up and down the lineup. And then you have pierre Edouard Belmar in the center who is such a veteran leadership presence and he's been huge on the penalty kills. So you've replaced a lot of that scoring, you've replaced a lot of that tenacity, but you've also brought in some versatility as well. I thought adding Kyler Yamamoto was a sneaky good signing for the Kraken. This is a player who, when he was with Edmonton, was playing most of his time in the top six. I think Yamamoto has had a nice start. He has moved up and down the lineup quite a bit, so I really like this addition offensively, but also in terms of his 200-foot game. How about it, Kyler Yamamoto? Scores! That's Kraken hockey, baby! The Kraken win the shootout! Over the summer, I uh, went through free agency. It was uh, definitely a little bit of a curveball. Didn't think I was going to get bought out. Going into free agency, kind of just asked me where I wanted to go, and I was like, really have no idea, just want to get a contract, but then they're like, it's really like a certain team, and obviously Seattle came to mind, very close to home and stuff like that for the family, and yeah, so ended up Seattle offering, and yeah. Stop! Yammer time! Three, it's been amazing. Um, anytime I can play in front of my family, um, did that in Spokane, Washington for the Chiefs for so many years. To be honest, I never thought I was actually going to play for the Chiefs. So when I played in California, my Billy Dad, a huge college guy, would only talk about college like you're going to college for sure. To see a guy that grew up in Spokane, Washington, he is a local product, is enormous. My career started in the WHL. My first on-air radio job was doing intermissions and post-game for the Thunderbirds. I'm biased just because I'm a Western Hockey League guy and I grew up in the league. I know the great things about the league. There's so many different ways to get to the National Hockey League, and it's, it's really kind of evolved over the years. There's no perfect path. You just have to find what's best for you. And I think for Kyler Yamamoto, for example, he found the best path for himself. Now, I think I was going into my 15-year-old year, and then once my brother, that was the same year that I got drafted to Spokane, and he ended up going to camp and signing like a week after, and then obviously throughout the year talking to him, and realizing that I could live at home, play with my older brother for three years, um, see my parents every day, see my old friends, go to school with them. Now um, it was kind of a no-brainer. So, but to be able to play for them, it was insane. Um, probably some of the best years of my life. My first year when I was 16, I think I put up 57 points in 68 games or something like that. Yeah, obviously that year helped me out a lot. My brother helped me out a lot that year and then kind of just built off of that. I remember watching him in juniors and I'm like, wow, this kid's something else. And the best thing about Kyler Yamamoto is not only is he from our state and playing now for the Kraken, he's also not the biggest guy in the world. He plays bigger than he is. What are you doing? Running into a train, bud. Never afraid, never had his head on a swivel. Highly skilled player. I think he's found a home in Seattle. He's there's a lot with Kyler Yamamoto that is good for not just on the ice of the product, but also just the, the overall uh, growth of the game in our area. And now if you're a young player, they can say, hey, I can be from right here and I can play in the NHL, and that's really cool to see. To be able to go into free agency and realize you could sign with a hometown team, um, you know, it's pretty special. One fifty-three to go. Left here in regulation. We're tied at three here in Denver. So is there something about playing in Colorado that brings out the best <laughs> in you? Larson to the outside. 
Oliver Bjorkstrand. He obviously had a good team there, and you want to beat him, so maybe that's why. He's left in regulation on the doorstep. Brooks is off the save. They score! Oliver Bjorkstrand! 31.6 seconds left in the third period. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's obviously late in the game, and, and you're trying to get that goal. Um, I get it behind the net, and immediately I think try to get it in, in, in the front of the net. I knew Tolby was open. Um, if I could get the pass through or not, I wasn't wasn't sure, but it got through, and um, yeah, I, I went uh, behind the net in front, and it really just came right to me, so it was an easy tap in. Oliver Bjorkstrand had two goals the last time your team was in this building. He does it again tonight. What can you say about the season he's having and his contribution tonight? Well, his numbers are starting to speak for themselves offensively, but you know, over the last six, seven games, his 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 200 foot game is really rounding out and uh, you know you see that night in and night out right now. Bjorkstrand shoots, scores! What a rip from the right side! It's been really cool to follow Oliver here at the Kraken because I was able to follow him from his draft year on and with the Columbus Blue Jackets so I got to watch him win the Calder Cup in the AHL and then play and get the series winning goal against the Tampa Bay Lightning. When I found out Oliver was coming to the Kraken, I was beyond excited. I thought it was a fantastic trade by Ron Francis and his team, both in terms of value, but in the player that they were bringing to the Kraken. We've seen what he can do. We can see how he is comfortable now and able to contribute. And I was just really excited to see a player I knew so well and knowing what he could do, knowing he was going to be able to do it with this team. It's been good. Obviously, uh, when you're in a new city, you try to adapt to it and figure out your surroundings, new teammates, coaches, and all that stuff. But um, from day one, uh, people have been very welcoming. When I think about Oliver's character off the ice, I think it's part of what makes him so skillful on the ice. He comes across as really calm, really peaceful, unassuming, but then he gets out there and in his game can be so aggressive, and I think that's part of what helps him catch opponents off guard. I think he's a really even keel guy. His teammates like him. He's adventurous, likes to explore, enjoys the perks of being able to travel to different cities, and just a really good teammate overall. Thanksgiving Eve in the Emerald City and with the holidays on the horizon, a reveal today. For the Winter Classic January 1st at T-Mobile Park, it harkens back to the past, it ties in the now. Take a look at these beautiful sweaters. Now my favorite part about these jerseys is the, uh, the felt look on the logo and the numbers. And we saw the layer there with all the jerseys, and I think these ones are going to be flying off the shelves. Okay, we have to get down to business here. Now, the Kraken have a chance tonight to pick up points in five consecutive games. This team should be real confident coming off of a great second period. Four goals in the last two second periods that they've played. Get the defenseman involved as well. It's been a real key. So if they keep building off of that in this game, I think they're going to like the outcome. You feel that? I didn't feel anything. Regardless of the team that they're playing on the other side, they have to be the hardest working team on the ice. And guys, you don't just compete to play well, you battle to earn two points. Sit back and enjoy this one. Off the draw, San Jose. Oh, there we go, there we go. Jared McCann, out to center ice, Adam Larson. A breakaway. Oh, wow. Jordan Everly's in, shielded by Kakanen. What a chance, JT, early on. Now Tanev walks in. He scores! And running. Nice goal, Terrell. One nothing, Seattle. York Strand out to center. He's off a stick and line change here for the Kraken. Plays it out to center. Here come the Kraken. Tolvanen. Gore for the shot. Goes wide. The rebound. Scores! That's the right. Oliver's play has contributed to the Kraken's success, obviously on the scoreboard. <laughs> I almost missed it. But you look at how effective that Yanni Gord line is with Oliver and Ellie Tolvanen. Off the headboards, Tolvanen scores! I, I get excited for that. Yeah. And they are not just talented offensively, they're talented defensively too, and I think that makes them a real threat when opponents try and keep possession of the puck. 
darts off the paddle of Kakanen. Larson scores! The big cat on the prowl. Yeah. Yeah. That's cracking hockey, baby. It's a 7-1 win over the San Jose Sharks. Good job, good job. And Oliver Bjorkstrand, third time in his career with a four-point nut. Just exceptional, and you see how he feels so comfortable this season. He's been going almost since the start. How would you describe your game, and how it contributes to the success of the team overall? Um, I think I want to put that part in S in the line. I think me, Tulby, and Guardo, we, we play a hard-nosed way. I think we keep it simple. I think uh, when we have success, it's just purely from out competing teams. And yeah, I, I don't like talking too much about individual. I think it's more of like a, a line success. Oliver, I know that you are always humble, but a four point night for you, including three assists. What was helping you find your teammates so effectively to set them up for success? Uh, I think it was really just uh, simple plays. Line mates were playing well and playing the puck in the net. So uh, that's all credit to them. All right, Oliver. Well, I think all of Kraken Nation is very thankful for you and your team. Have a good holiday tomorrow. Thank you so much.